in the heart of a bustling Cairo neighborhood, nestled within walls echoing with years of history, stood the home of Zara. The sun cast a golden hue over the city, but inside, the atmosphere was less warm, tinged with the remnants of a family reshaped by loss and new alliances. Zara, have you seen my scarf? Hana, her stepsister, called out from her room, her voice laced with an expectation of immediate response. Zara, sifting through old photographs in the living room, looked up. She found her mother's smiling face staring back at her from a worn-out picture. Sighing, she placed it aside and replied, No, Hana, I haven't. Her stepmother, Mahasan, appeared in the doorway, her gaze sharp and scrutinizing. Zara, don't lie. You were in Hana's room yesterday. Did you take it? Zara felt a familiar knot in her stomach. I didn't take it, Mahasan. I was just... Enough. Mahasan cut her off. If you find it, return it. And make sure to clean up here. We're having guests tonight. As Mahasan walked away, Zara's father entered, his once bright eyes now dulled. He glanced at the photo in Zara's hand and offered a weak smile. She'd be proud of you, Zara. I miss her, Baba, Zara whispered, clutching the photo. Her father sighed, a sound heavy with unspoken sorrow. Life moves on, my dear. We must make the best of what we have. Zara nodded, but her heart ached with unhealed wounds. As her father retreated to his study, she resumed her task, her thoughts drifting to her mother's gentle laughter, a stark contrast to the coldness that now filled their home. Later, as she set the table, Hannah breezed into the dining room, a triumphant smile on her face. Found my scarf, she announced, twirling it around her neck. It was in my other bag. Mahasan shot Zara a look that mixed accusation with triumph. Zara bit her lip, choosing silence over confrontation. Dinner was a strained affair, with Mahasan and Hana dominating the conversation, their words a dance of mutual admiration. Zara's father remained quiet, lost in his thoughts, his presence more like a shadow than a member of the family. After the meal, Zara retreated to the small garden, her only refuge. The stars above offered a sense of peace, a sharp contrast to the turmoil within the walls of her home. Her phone buzzed, a message from Amina, her closest friend and cousin. How are you holding up? Amina's words read. Zara typed back, Some days are harder than others, but I'm managing. You're stronger than you realize, Amina replied. Don't let them dim your light. Zara smiled faintly. Amina's unwavering support was a balm to her weary soul. The night deepened, and Zara stayed in the garden, lost in memories and thoughts of a future that seemed as distant as the stars above. The injustice of her situation weighed heavily on her, but the spark of resilience, fueled by her friend's encouragement, refused to be extinguished. Inside, the walls of her home held stories of a happier past and the harsh reality of the present. Zara knew the journey ahead would be fraught with challenges, but she was determined to face them, armed with the strength inherited from her mother and the support of her loyal friend. As the golden Egyptian sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over Cairo's bustling streets, Zara and her husband, Karim, settled into the comfort of their modest home. Life had blossomed in unexpected ways since Zara and Hana, her stepsister, had both entered the world of marriage. Zara found love and support in Karim, while Hana's path seemed fraught with silent struggles. In their living room, adorned with memories and modest decor, Zara and Karim were setting up a video call. Karim's job in Dubai meant their moments together were often shared across screens, a digital bridge connecting their hearts. Zara, you're glowing, Karim remarked with a tender smile, adjusting the laptop. I wish I could be there with you, especially now with the baby coming. Zara's hand instinctively caressed her pregnant belly. We're managing well, Karim. Your love is always with me. Their intimate moment was interrupted by the doorbell. Sighing, Zara rose to answer, her heart sinking with a premonition of who it might be. Standing at the door were Mahasan, her stepmother, and Hana, faces painted with forced smiles. Ah, Zara, just wanted to see how my stepdaughter is faring. Mahasan's voice was syrupy sweet. Zara, masking her reluctance, led them into the living room. Karim is on a call with Baba, she informed them, referring to her father. Karim's warm face greeted them from the laptop. Hello, Mahasan Hana. Good to see you. The conversation was pleasant enough, skirting around deeper issues. Hana's eyes, however, 
lingered on Zara's belly with a mix of longing and sorrow. Her own journey into motherhood had been marked by disappointments and the harsh reality of infertility. Dinner was a quiet affair, with the underlying tensions simmering beneath polite chatter. It was after the meal, in the privacy of the living room, that Mahasan unveiled her true intentions. Zara, your twins are a blessing, she began, her eyes gleaming with a plan already forming. But Hana, she has not been so fortunate. Zara, feeling a knot tighten in her stomach, could sense where this was leading. Mahasan leaned in, her voice low and persuasive. What if you could help Hana? Give her one of your twins. A solution to our little problem. The suggestion struck Zara like a physical blow. I... I can't believe you're asking this of me. That's unthinkable. Hana looked away, her face a canvas of conflict and shame. Mahasan, undeterred, pressed on. Think about it, Zara. It could be our little secret. A way to make everyone happy. Zara's response was firm, her voice laced with indignation. No, Mahasan, I will not do this. It's wrong. The air grew cold with Mahasan's veiled threat. Well, consider it, Zara. Hana's happiness is in your hands. After they left, Zara sat in stunned silence. The weight of Mahasan's proposal hung heavily in the room. Karim's face, filled with concern, reappeared on the laptop screen. What happened, Zara? You look upset, he asked, his voice laced with worry. Zara took a moment, gathering her thoughts. Mahasan, she wants me to give one of our twins to Hana. Karim's expression turned to one of shock and disbelief. That's outrageous. Zara, we won't let her pressure us into something so unethical. Zara nodded, finding strength in his words. I know, Karim. We'll stand against this together. The chapter closes with Zara and Karim's united resolve, a testament to their love and moral fortitude. In the face of Mahasan's manipulative tactics, they stand strong, ready to protect their growing family. Zara paced nervously in her living room, clutching her phone tightly. Her eyes darted to the clock. It was almost time. She dialed Amina's number, her cousin and confidant since the first chapter of her ordeal. Zara, are you sure about this? Amina's voice was laced with concern. I have to do this, Amina. It's the only way to stop Mahasan. Zara replied, her voice resolute yet tinged with fear. Okay, remember, just act normal. Keep her talking until the police arrive, Amina advised. Zara nodded to herself, taking a deep breath. I will. Thank you for everything. After ending the call, Zara checked the hidden camera and microphone one last time. They were perfectly concealed, ready to record everything. The doorbell rang, sending a shiver down her spine. Zara composed herself and opened the door. Mahasan stood there, her eyes cold and calculating. Zara, dear, I'm here for our agreement, Mahasan said stepping inside without waiting for an invitation. There's no agreement, Mahasan. I told you, I won't give up my child, Zara countered, her voice steady despite her racing heart. Mahasan's smile was chilling. Oh, come now, Zara. We both know you don't have a choice. Give me the child, and all this unpleasantness can be forgotten. Zara felt a surge of anger. How can you be so cruel? These are my children. Mahasan's expression hardened. Cruel? No, Zara, I'm being practical. Hana needs this. You're being selfish. As they spoke, Zara subtly gestured towards the hidden camera, recording every word. Selfish? You're asking me to give up my baby. Zara's voice cracked with emotion. Mahasan leaned in, her voice a venomous whisper. If you don't comply, think of the consequences. Your little family might not be so safe. Zara's heart pounded, but she knew she had what she needed. You won't get away with this, Mahasan. Before Mahasan could respond, the sound of sirens approached. Zara looked past her, towards the window, a faint smile of relief appearing on her face. Mahasan's eyes widened in realization. What have you done? The door burst open, and police officers entered, their expression serious. Mahasan, you're under arrest for extortion and making threats against Zara and her family, the leading officer announced. Mahasan's facade of control shattered as she was handcuffed. Zara, you traitor! She hissed. Zara watched, her emotions a complex mix of triumph and sorrow. You brought this on yourself, Mahasan. As Mahasan was led away, Zara felt a weight lift from her shoulders. She called Karim, her voice shaking with relief. It's over, Karim. She's been arrested. Karim's voice, filled with pride and love, came through the phone. You're incredible, Zara. 
You protected our family. In the following days, the fallout was swift. Hana, confronted with the truth of her mother's actions, chose to divorce her husband, unable to bear the shame and guilt. Zara and Karim, reunited, made the decision to start anew. They moved to a new country, seeking a fresh beginning away from the shadows of the past. In their new home, Zara looked out at the peaceful view, her twins playing at her feet. Karim wrapped his arms around her, their love a testament to their journey. Zara reflected on everything she had been through. We made it, Karim. Despite everything, we made it. Karim kissed her forehead. Together, always. The chapter ends with Zara gazing into the future, her heart full of hope and strength. She had faced unimaginable trials, but in the end, she emerged victorious, her spirit unbroken.